A big thank you to PCBWay who have kindly sponsored this video. We're going to build this Amiga A600 chip RAM expansion. And we're going to do it right now. This PCB was ordered via PCBWay.com. You can get an instant quote for your own PCB project and simply and easily upload your own Gerber files. Or if you don't fancy designing your own boards, there's a whole host of shared community projects that you can add to the cart and build at home. Let's go. First, we'll solder on the RAM because that's the fiddliest part. Then we'll build up the bigger components. This socket the backup battery holder. But first we'll do the smaller components. Before we start, let's clean the board because I've been handling it and I want to make sure everything is clean. Ah, IPA. The isopropyl alcohol breaks down grease and evaporates quickly. OK, maybe I got overexcited. Regular viewers will know that I love a bit of flux. It really helps the solder to take. I like to add some solder to the pads when doing SMD work. Notice on the board that there is a pin 1 marker. It corresponds with the indentation on the very end of the chip. Lining the chip up with the pads, we will solder the opposite corners of the chip. After the first pin is soldered, you have a little flexibility to straighten a chip if needed. A bit more flux on the chip legs. Then we fix the second corner. The alignment of the chip is pretty good. I'm going to show two techniques here, one that never works for me and one that does. First I try drag soldering. It's a fail on this kind of chip. The solder doesn't get to the right part of the component legs. Some of the legs are soldered, but it's a mess. Let's clean this failure up. I'm using the amazing SS02 solder sucker with the high temperature silicon tip. Highly recommended, my affiliate link is below. Who doesn't love suction? Now let's switch to my usual hand soldering technique. With the solder preloaded on the tip, I touch the component leg and solder pad at the same time, drawing it back out towards myself. The solder usually flows between the heated pad and leg without bridging other legs. If a bridge does happen, we can easily clear it with the solder sucker. This is looking a bit messy because of my first attempt. Let's see if we can make a better job on the other side of the chip.
revisit any legs that might need it. Let's power through the second chip. Of course, you all know that I have a hot air station and solder paste, but I wanted to do this in a way that everyone can join in with, using minimal equipment. Not the prettiest job, but functional. With the memory soldered, it's time to put on the decoupling capacitors. There are six 100 nanofarad 0805 size capacitors to solder. They are pretty small, but with the right technique, it's not too difficult. I'm going to put some solder on the pads. I'm going to show you a common mistake first, and then my approach. At location C1, I've put solder on both pads. Many people do this. But it is a mistake. It means you can never get the component flush to the board. With SMD soldering, you need to hold down the small components, otherwise the surface tension of the solder makes the component stand upright. The technical term for this is tombstoning. If both the pads are loaded with solder, it makes it hard to hold the component down. Let's clean these pads off with some solder wick. Now this is how I do it. First load one pad with solder. Then rotate the board when you realise you're right handed and the camera is in the way. Then holding the component, heat the pad and the end of the component at the same time. Then solder the other end. This method is much easier and allows faster working. C4 could have been straighter, but it will work. With the decoupling caps installed, let's install the real-time clock and the sockets. There are some SED components on the underside, but let's crack on with the larger parts on this side. Grab that chip and slip it in. Flip the board over and secure the opposite pin corners. With all soldering, it's important to heat the component leg or lead and the solder pad at the same time. 
the heat makes the solder flow onto the metal due to capillary action. A good solder joint should look like a volcano, with slightly convex sides that curve inwards towards the joint. This is a sign that the solder has flowed well enough into the joint to cause the surface of the molten solder to be convex. This looks pretty good. Next, the socket. This part is actually from a modern micro bit set, but fits the A600 perfectly. It's cheap too. So don't wait and just ram it in all the holes. These pins are large, so it will take a while to solder. All the parts you need are cheap for this project and you can buy the board off the shelf at PCBWay. There's a list of parts in the links below. Next we have the battery holder which feeds the clock, and also the jumper to enable the clock. C9 is an optional decoupling capacitor. On the underside we have some more SMD resistors, a capacitor and then a power LED. There's a small BAT54 diode which we'll install first. Again, solder one pad for each component. Placing the diode, we touch the tip of its third leg until it gets hot. Keep holding it whilst it hardens. Then secure the other legs. Pay some more attention to the third leg to finish it off nicely. C7 is another 100 nanofarad capacitor. And this one wants to escape. But eventually it succumbs to my will. C8 follows quickly. We'll do the rest of the components in this direction. Resistors R1, 2 and 3 are 100 kilo ohm, and resistors 4 and 5 are 220 ohm. Once you get some practice, soldering these packages is quite easy. Next we can solder the blue LED in its corresponding 1K resistor. I've never used one of these types of LEDs before and I'm not really sure of the right way around. I've checked online and found conflicting information, so I'm going to try one way first and flip it if it's not working. Not the prettiest job, but functional. So, just the battery holder and the jumper to go. The ground plane on the negative terminal takes a lot of heat to get the solder flowing. Soldering the header is very simple, pins and pads at the same time. And enabled. 
Last, let's add that optional decoupling capacitor at C9. It's a 10 microfarad 16 volt part. Remember the positive leg is longer and the negative leg is marked with a stripe. Solder the leads. And clip off the protrusions. And there it is. Finished apart from an IPA cleaning. You can order this and many other open source projects in the shared projects community at PCBWay. Just order the board and away you go. So here we are with my Stunt Amiga A600. It has a rudimentary workbench installed with a memory testing utility and a mouse. Not even a floppy drive. So minimalist. So what we're going to do is power it up and see what the RAM is reported as without the interface installed. Workbench shows 773 kilobytes of free memory. The A600 has one meg of chip RAM as standard, so that's fine. Let's take its top off and see the goodies. The expansion is looking good, I think. I hope it doesn't burn my house down. Of course, normally you'd slip it in the back door, but I want you to see it going in. Lots of room for fingers here. Now Workbench reports over 1,826 kilobytes free, which is awesome. But we need a proper memory test. And here's one I used to use back in the day. It's good to see it reporting two megabytes of chip RAM. Let's run some stress testing. We select all the options for chip RAM and hit start. I actually restarted the test on continuous mode and left it to run overnight. It completed 190 cycles with no errors. The LED didn't work, it was the wrong way around. I flipped it and it went a bit melty, but at least it's the right way around now. It's working. It's working. Brilliantly. Pun intended. Sorry. A big thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and for the impressive quality boards. And another big thank you to all my Patreon supporters without whom there wouldn't be any videos to sponsor at all. If you'd like to chuck some change in the hat, it'd really support further content. Link below. Thank you for watching this video. Perhaps you'd like to watch another. Here, I'll put some on the screen for you. Bye.